The gospel of Jesus Christ has perfect instructions for relationships. This is the title of my talk today. These instructions are directed towards the mind, heart, and conscience. Together they confirm their superiority in comparison with other values. This is my goal in this presentation, to address the instructions of Jesus Christ to your mind, to your heart, to your conscience, so that you can realize how unique, beneficial, and life-changing they are. Relationships are the most important parts of human life. If a belief does not create unity and harmony among people, it will be a total loss to spend life with that belief. Our beliefs shape our identities and attitudes in relationships. So we need to choose which belief to follow or not to follow. It is therefore urgent for us to compare our belief with others and see whether it is the best or we need to replace it with the best. I mentioned that the instructions of the gospel are perfect. This is because the gospel believes that love and kindness are the key factors in building healthy relationships. No other belief recognizes love and kindness as fundamental to relationships as does Jesus Christ. All those beliefs that hold to evolutionary theory are unable doctrinally to say that there is a difference between kindness and cruelty. Why? Because for them everything happens by accident. It is not therefore up to humankind to choose love and kindness as the surpassing factors in their relationship. These beliefs sacrifice the freedom of choice to the forces of nature and make people powerless. Investigating, evaluating and creative decision making in relationship are therefore impossible. The reality is that they do not happen by accident, but by the words we speak and the attitudes we manifest. In beliefs like New Age, secular humanism, Hinduism, Buddhism, and others, each individual is taken as equal to God. Love and kindness become the vessels of self-centeredness and serve the individual's motives only. Imagine in a family, love and kindness of a husband becomes irrelevant to his wife and the wives to her husband or the children to their parents since everybody is taught to be God and to follow his or her own model. A family or a society with such an individualistic ethic creates anarchy. It is not the individualistic model of a husband or a wife or a child or a leader that establishes a peaceful family or society. It is the values of the perfect model whose standard is above every other model. In Islam also, love and kindness are subject to the authority of the Muslim leader. It is therefore not love and kindness that rule in Islam, but the decision 
and power of the ruling authority. Consequently, no one in Islam, not even Muhammad, can be the perfect model of love and kindness since power and force make love and kindness conditional. Only Jesus can be the perfect model of love and kindness for you in your relationships with your family members and others. Why? Let me first raise a couple of questions and then give you reasons for this. What do you think the behaviors of a perfect model of love and kindness should be? What is the proper definition of this model? This perfect model must be a person who practically demonstrates the excellence of love and kindness to all friends and opponents. To friends, because true friendship is true love and kindness. To opponents, because they can pause a second and understand that opposition should not be to degrade, but to present a better method in peaceful way in order to restore peaceful relationships. No religion nor philosophy introduces such a model to the world except the gospel of Jesus Christ. This model is Jesus Christ himself. The gospel of Jesus Christ says that God is love. If God would not love, his message and messenger also could not be loving. So the first step in having loving relationship with others is to discover the true God who is the source of love and to build our life on his foundation. Our life needs to have a deeper connection with the source of love. That way we will never fall short of love and kindness in our relationships and never make excuses for hatred. Jesus Christ says in the gospel that all the law and prophets must depend on two things. First, love God with all your heart, soul, and mind. Second, love your neighbor as yourself. He's bringing forth the meaning that true prophet and the true law must be based on love and kindness. If not, then neither the prophet nor his religion and law are from the loving God. Therefore, no matter how interested you are in having long-lasting peace or friendship with others, it will not happen by any model or prophet you follow, unless you are following the perfect model of love and kindness in Jesus Christ. If you follow an angry and dictatorial prophet or leader, his attitudes will be your standards towards your family and others. But if you follow Jesus, his unconditional love and kindness will be your standard towards others. There are huge differences between the words of the Koran and the gospel concerning relationships. The Koran lacks the love and kindness which are for long-lasting friendship. Christ came to this world to teach us love and clean our hearts from hatred, cursing, hostility, and war. But the last 10 years of Muhammad's life was full of all of those things. Can there be a long-lasting friendship with hatred, cursing, hostility, and war? Absolutely not. 
Imagine if God hated and cursed you for your sin and was always hostile to you. Would there be any hope for you to return to him and become his friend? No. People become God's friend because of his love and compassion, not because of his hostility. Abraham became the friend of God because God was friendly and kind, not terrifying. This is true in our relationship too. People become friends with us if we are kind, loving, and caring. Nobody becomes our sincere friend if we curse him or become hostile to him. That's why the gospel in 1 John chapter 4 verses 11 and 12 says, Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. If we love one another, God dwells in us and his love is perfected in us. The gospel tells you to allow the God of love to live in you so that your love becomes perfect and then you can change even your enemies through that perfect love. Because any perfect thing draws attention, so does perfect love. With perfect love, you may have a loving family. You and your loving family will shine in your neighborhood and society. Your love also may amaze your opponents. And possibly they will follow your footsteps and become free of enmity. That's why you need to follow Jesus Christ and make his gospel the crown of your head for your relationship in your family and with others.